Sucks night one. Let's continue. Miss Lily put me in charge again. I hope this is going to be okay. Her expression dropped. You're about to you're about to go on a date with two women who want to kill you. I thought we went through over this. Sparky looked around. He was back in the alley with Naomi, but he was just. She groaned as she started to flick through pages of her book. Tell me I read this wrong and it warped, it wiped your memory. No, no, no. I already met up with the girls and we went over to the library and they cornered me and, and I, and they, um, we just had tea. Sparky started blushing profusely before he reached up to feel his neck. Jane's teeth marks were, Jan's teeth marks weren't there. They did what? They, I think they killed me already? Jan bit me and sucked out my blood while Anna sucked. Sparky turned beet red, but Naomi was trying to process what she was hearing. Wait, you died? And now, you're here. She returned to her book and flipped through it even more quickly. Are you sure it wasn't a premonition or a glimpse into the future? I've never had one of those before, but it felt real. I remember the sensation when I touched my touched the MacGuffin. It felt like my hand was like glass shattering. Naomi looked up from her book. Wait, they let you touch it? Yeah. She abruptly grabbed his hand, the ruin glowing again. Her eyes darted over it, looking for something Sparky couldn't see. The energies of this of this rune, they're different. And the Matrix design has been altered, but ha- She paused. The recipient will, po will possess knowledge of future events after they come to pass. Her eyes went wide as she returned to her book, turning pages even more frantically than before. She read over a few passages before looking up to Sparky slowly. Uh, so, um... You know that movie where the main character has to keep going through the same day over and over again? The two of them paused, just staring at each other for a few minutes. So I'm going to keep re reliving this day. No, pretty sure it's just from when I when I activated the ruin, and I'm pretty sure... She looked back down at the book and read the next couple of passages several times. I can keep reactivating it to bring you back to a new point. Holy fuck! So you're saying I can keep dying? Only the bearer of the MacGuffin... Only to the bearers of the MacGuffin. If you die another way, uh, you die for real. Naomi suddenly slammed shut the book. I'm gonna have a drink. So they killed you. Yeah, no shit, woman. Did we not just go over this? That means I was right. And that means they have to be stopped. Wait, what? Two minutes ago, you were telling me that you didn't know what they were up to, and that I couldn't go after them on just assumptions. They killed you. Their intent is pretty clear now, so go home and I'll handle this. Wait, wait! I still might be able to save them. Very cute, Sparky, but it's a bit too late for that. And your demon arse wasn't there to stop him. Yeah, no, now he can, now he can tell her, but he's gonna be stupid about this, because he wants that ass. The connection. The reason has to be me. They told me it's because they like me. Naomi paused, staring at him incredulously. Like you? You know you said that out loud. Like you? What is this, third grade? They killed you, dumbass. No, no, it's like they don't love me, but they have feelings for me. They were really heartbroken when they had to do it, but whatever the reason, they had were stronger. I think I can use that to make them stop. Make them stop? With what? G a good dicking? What the- Really? 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 
Okay. What the curse word, Barky? Do you hear yourself? They killed you. Is this a snuff fetish? You're putting your life on the line for them? And yours. Are you still willing to die to stop them? Naomi was furious, but paused immediately. She clenched her fist. I just want to see everyone survive the night. Is that too much to ask? Oh, sorry. I just want everyone to survive the night. Is that too much to ask? Fine. I don't have a full one. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Fine. What's the current plan? I don't have a full one, but... I can, can I keep dying? Yeah, and you'll keep coming back to me. Are there any rules for keeping the space-time continuum intact? Well, my major isn't astrophysics, so I have no fucking clue. But I'd say don't fuck up too much and don't create a time paradox. I'm not sure how you do it, but we're messing with heavy stuff. So are you allowed to help me? I'm trying to help you. You hard on- your hard on is making it difficult. No, I mean if they kill me and I come back to you with information, can you help me? That's very risky, Sparky. I can't get found out as a n I mean, Hunter! What do you mean? It's Halloween. I assume that the getup isn't standard issue, right? Naomi's scowl broke for a moment and she looked down. What's wrong with my outfit? You look like a fantasy character. If you approach someone looking like that last month, they'd be all- they'd all- there'd be a problem, but it's Halloween. Nobody's going to know the difference. Naomi huffed. Fine, so what now? They brought me to, two se to 270 in the library. They let me go in first, and then they snuck in somehow. Likely so they wouldn't be seen with you, so... Can you... Can you bring attention to 270? Foil them somehow? Seal the door shut with magic? I don't know. Something you subtle? Naomi nodded as a smile crept onto her face. Yeah, I got something in mind. But I still need to examine the MacGuffin. Where is it? Jam pulled it out of her hair. That's weird. She must have a magic pocket. She probably doesn't have good control of it. She's lucky she doesn't just drop the thing. Naomi nodded. I can probably get it with close contact. See? I think this is coming along together quite well. And I think you're going to the extreme lengths for two people who have proven that they want to murder you. Well, you did say I wouldn't accept don't stick my dick in crazy advice. Naomi paused. When did I say that? Oh, um, last time. Well, I was right. You pointed at Sparky. But I need that MacGuffin. Tonight. If it can manipulate time, I need to see how dangerous it is. And after I analyze it, I will decide what happens next. Deal. Sparky waited again for the girls. It was a bit creepy. The same people passed in the same costumes, having the same conversations. It was a bit hard to grasp he had gone back in time. Sparky watched the girls arrive just as they had again, all smiles. It was very weird to be in their presence again. Hi, hi! Hey, killer. Anna once again stepped forward and winked, showing off her costume. Oh, so, what do you think, cutie? Sparky was about to respond, but thought, but a thought brought a smirk to his face. You remind me of that show, Battle Bunnies, the girl, Amy. Y you mean... Jan sighed in Anna's obvious excitement. That anime thing, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. And you said nobody would get it. Sparky turned to Jan and smiled. Tell me how great my costume is. And you look- And look at your maid costume. Such detail. Did you make it yourself? I- I- Wow, thank you for noticing. Both of the girls shared a nervous glance at each other before smiling at Sparky. Let's go... Let's go. I want to take the haunted tour at the library. I hear they went all out this year and don't want to miss it. Anna perked up. Yeah, come on. Both of the girls started heading towards the oddly shaped building. 
and Sparky let himself have a grin before following. They arrived at the library once again, and the girls paused as they got closer. Go ahead in, Theo. We'll meet you in there. Yeah, we need a minute. We'll meet you by the lecture the lecture hall upstairs, room 270. Not a problem. See you guys in there. Sparky walked up the stairs again and turned to see them gone. He grinned and started quickly toward the room. As Sparky entered, Dr. Blankenship wasn't there this time. He hoped she was okay. He followed the same path he did to go up to 270. So now we see things are a little bit different each time. As he arrived, he saw Dr. Blankenship inside talking on her phone. Sparky cringed. Did Naomi put her in danger now? He moved into the room. Dr. Blankenship noticed him and told him with a finger to give her a moment. Yes, 270. It is everything it... It is everywhere inside the room. All right, see you soon. Thank you. She hung up. Hello, Theo. Fancy seeing you here. Uh, yeah, what happened? Someone threw a stone in the window. Shameful, really. Normally, people are so careful, so well-behaved on Halloween. I hope nothing of Professor Sovies was ruined. Becky looked around at all the glass on the floor. Subtle or subtle, right? So... You heard it from her, your, so you heard it from your tour then? Oh no, Naomi reported it to me. Dr. Blankenship reported, and Sparky turned to see Naomi against the wall. She waved. Hey, Spark. Hey, Sparky. Oh, you know about his nickname too. I found that that's so interesting. I hate being the last to know things. After a moment, the girls appeared at the doorway, both shocked, with shocked looked on their faces. Dr. Blackenship, what are you doing here? Oh, hello, John. Anna, what brings you here? Uh, uh we, um, fuck. There with do me, Dr. Blackenship. They invited me out. Oh, good. Oh, good of you girls to actually get him out of the book for once. And that's a lovely costume, Anna. Reminds me of a very old show called Battle Bunnies. Anna immediately blushed. But why are you all up here? Jen told me to meet her up here, right? I, um, I thought this is where the tour started. No, that's downstairs, but all of you out, shoo. Security is going to want to look it over. Naomi moved quickly over to Sparky. You heard the lady. She started to push him out the room towards the girls. She leaned in and whispered in his ear. I'm going for it. As they reached the doorway, Sparky felt one of his feet pulled out from under him, and he tumbled forward. Right into a pair of tatas. Sparky blushed heavily as he, pull as he pulled his head out of Anna's bosom, who herself was blushing. I'm really sorry, I... Jeez, Sparky, you gotta be more nimble on your feet. Naomi had fallen into Jan and was already on her feet, manhandling Jan to try to get her up. You okay? As Naomi asked, she hit Jan's back with her hand, perhaps a bit too hard as she pulled her hand away, Sparky saw the MacGuffin necklace hanging out of her closed fist. Yeah, I'm fine. Jan seemed quite miffed, examining her outfit. Sparky helped and blu the blushing Anna up. Is everyone all right? Everything's fine, doctor. We just fell. Black and Ship just shook her head. Crazy coeds. Well, I have to remain here and skip my next tour. I want to make sure everything of Sobeys is still here. I'll be giving it tomorrow, though, so do come back. In fact, extra points if you do. That means Sparky is going for sure. Sparky? Who's Sparky? Oh, Theo is Sparky. I thought Theo was Theo. Oh no, Sparky's his nickname. It's a delightful little tale. Sparky blushed. It's, uh, my roommate gave it gave me the nickname. Now, shoo. You're all in costume. I'm sure you have, I'm sure you have fun things you want to do, so shoo. All kinds of things. I'm gonna head off. I'll see you guys. See you later, Naomi. Probably sooner than you think.
Oh, Naomi's gonna use it on us. Fuck. The three... The three wound their way through the library, heading toward the stairs. Jan and Anna looked very nervous and deeply conflicted. They shared glances at each other, but didn't really say anything. Uh, hey, Theo, I mean Sparky. Since this place is out of the question, what if we took you back to our place and you know... She winked at Jan, who nodded as a smile crept onto her face. Yeah, come on, Sparky. How about we take take you back to our place sparky blushed at the resp at the prospect even though he knew it would lead to his death he couldn't deny the temptation we can get to that but i'd really like to go out with you two and see some of the sights all of the crescent valley is celebrating halloween there's tricks there's trick or treating with the staff at the science building and of course the carnival why don't we visit one of those? Jan seemed perturbed, but then a smile formed on her lips. She wandered behind Anna, putting her hand on her shoulder, and Anna glanced back at her. But there's so many other things to see and do back at our apartment. Anna put her hands on... Oh, sorry, Jan put her hands on Anna's hips as Anna's face withered into nervousness. All the fun bends... All the fun bends to travel around on. Jan's hand slowly moved upwards along Anna's hips, along the curve of her hourglass figure. All the fun things to play with. Jan abruptly grabbed Anna's chest and her hands squeezed her ample bosom. Anna squeaked in response. And not to mention the funniest ride in the funnest ride in town. The lower hand slipped around the front, rubbing at Anna's midriff before moving between her thighs. All you have to do is let the word yes go from your lips to her. Holy shit, she's horny. Anna suddenly turned and locked lips with Jan, pushing her against the wall. She passionately drove her face into hers, the vampire's eyes going wide with shock. Jan struggled to get Anna off her as the succubus locked her arms around her. Anna, I hey. Jan's eyes darted between her friend and Sparky. We need a minute. Watch the door for us, would you? Uh, sure. Sparky couldn't help but smile as the pair ducked into the study next to them and continued the sound of struggling coming from inside. Damn, horny monsters. Sparky jumped at the sound of Naomi behind and found her not a step away from him. Do you have to sneak up on people like that? Uh, yeah, it's my job. She nodded over to the room. Not going to peek? They're having a private conversation, and I got too riled up. Conversation, yeah, of course. Naomi pulled a small piece of paper as she walked to the wall and then slipped it, slipped, slapped it onto it. These prayer scrolls don't work that well, at least longitude, but... She walked back over to Sparky. Can I see your hand? Sparky looked up, perplexed, but offered his hand to her. Though this ruin is complex, its premise is a connection ruin, which means that all I... that I should be able to share some things. She pressed a finger. Naomi went over and ripped the now blank piece of paper off the wall. She noticed Sparky staring at her. Calm down, champ. Gonna have plenty more chances. They're gonna know something's up if you already pitched a tent. So that's where we're gonna leave it today. But I do have something special for you guys today. Sorry, it's gotta be a short one. I've got stuff to go do. But... <laughs>